you have the power and the money, you can do anything around here in Mexico. I guess we're crazy. Nobody fights against cartels because you know you're going to die. And we're fighting the most violent one. I don't know if that makes us more violent, but we're winning. My name is Antonio Gutierrez Farias, and I'm from Los Reyes, Michoacán. I'm an auto defensa. I'm here to clean out the Templarios. I'm here to get my revenge, you could say, for what they did to me, what they did to my family. The Caballero Templarios are a cartel. They're supposed to be like mafia, like drugs. But they weren't moving no drugs, they were kidnapping, extortioning. Killing people, whatever it takes, innocent or not innocent. Kids or not kids. And they were monsters. They were the bosses, they were the owners of Michoacan. If they didn't like you, they could kill you anytime. And nobody was gonna say nothing because everybody's bought. And that's when everybody had enough. We removed the police, all the municipalities, because they were sold completely, they were corrupted. And we took our own guns, made our barricades, and refused to let them in. This is a picture of me when I was little here in Mexico. And like a couple months after this was when I went to the United States. Since I can remember, I don't remember Mexico. I felt like I was American. I was pretty much raised there since I was young. I got a, little, I got a younger brother and I got a younger sister. And they're out there, they're, they're completely born there. I mean, I was trouble since I was 13. 13 when everything just boom, blew for me. I went to so many different junior highs, <laughs> high schools, elementaries. I went school from school from school. No school wanted me. You could say I was mad at the world, mad at my mom, mad at my dad, mad at everybody. And I don't know, I was with a bunch of gang members. Some were young, some were older than we were. I just felt like we were family. And they just started going up from there. Years fighting, carrying knives, pistols. My name was recognized in the gang, what I was doing. And just stuff got real intense, man. And it was probably like seven in the morning when I heard this loud knocking on my front door and pow, pow, pow. And I go to the window and I open the window that's right next to the door and I see a bunch of unmarked cars and people in black running up. I'm like, what? I'm looking at it easily if I get a good 45 with the L, 45 to life. They brought all the evidence they had. And against me, they had nothing. At the end, the DA came up to us with a deal. He said, you take a 211, you take an armed robbery and a strike, and you get deported for life and you get the fuck out. I got deported straight out of prison. Wow, that was, that was something different. First time being alone in a place I never been in. Rumors about cartels, killing people, doing this, doing that. And I pretty much walk into a hell. As soon as I got here, I found out that the cartel had killed one of my uncles. I get picked up by the sicarios where I wasn't even doing nothing. I was inside my house, 
eating pizza, watching a movie. Twenty-two days they had me in a cabin in, in this hill, and I didn't know at the time where I was or what was happening. I don't even know who the people were that were torturing me. They had a like a costal over my head the whole time. And then I just came to this one day where this guy came up to me. He stood me up and he started walking. We walked about a good 15 minutes and we came up to this hole where there was already three bodies in there. The guy told me, get on your knees. And I backed up. And when I backed up, I seen him. He was trying to unholster his gun. With my hands cuffed in the front, I hit him in the head and I took off running. I was a good 25 meters from him when he started shooting. I remember feeling the trees, the bits of trees hit my face as the bullets were hitting and I was just running and running. I probably spent two, three weeks recovering in Guadalajara and the, and the movement was already happening, but I had it in my own mind to come back and get revenge. And that's when my uncle Gallino was in the United States and he decided to come back to fight. He came back and he told me, look, check this out. I'm in this movement and we're gonna clean them. I'm like, I'm in it. Now we're fighting. We take care of each other. So like my homie Wacho, he won't leave me anywhere. They're not gonna run, they'll stay and fight with me. I follow Michoacano around to take care of him, and he likes that. He, that's why he wants me with him. O sea, yo, yo conocí a mi tocayo, Antonio, porque yo también me llamo Antonio, es mi tocayo. Me lo presentaron mis hermanos, mis compañeros de lucha, de confianza, y me lo presentaron tal, de tal forma que era de confianza, ni usa ninguna droga. Él está consciente diario. Me pareció un buen muchacho, él tenía historias, Y él viene de Estados Unidos, donde se crió sin, sin sus padres, creció en las pandillas, peleando, no sé si haya estado hasta en el bote, pero realmente esta lucha vino a salvarlo, porque lo vino a, a dar a entender. En segundo lugar, él está mirando que esta causa es muy noble. A lot of people in Michoacán just want to live in peace. Like, they don't care who controls the drug trade or what's going on as long as people don't get mixed up with these people. I can sit here and try to bullshit you guys that, oh no, drug dealers are bad and stuff. Everybody uses drugs. There's people in, this, in the United States that can't find a place to buy weed or can't find a place to buy some good coke, and they're looking for it. And if the government will legalize it, then all this crime stuff will probably come to an end. But until then, there's gonna be drug dealers, there's gonna be cartels, there's gonna be er everything in between to sell the drugs. It's all these Americans, all these other people here criticizing us. People like that don't understand it because they have everything. They're born having stuff. I ain't got nothing, still have nothing. The only thing I have is my family. They can say I'm violent. They can say I'm an animal. Whatever, it don't bother me when they find themselves in the same position that we're in now, they're not gonna like the feeling. I'm surviving. That's, I, I gotta do what I have to do to survive and take care of my family. If that means doing what I have to. It's all, not for the country, it's not for the president, it's not for nobody, it's for us, for our families. A lot of us are still here and more people are trying to join in to fight with us. We're cleaning. That's what we're here to do. And that's the thing around here. You're not sure about the future.
this is the perfect storm. Every person has a story as to why they're coming across. Primeramente Dios, yo la voy a recuperar. We're fighting a war here. Every day somebody's dying here. 